In this video, we're going to look at the history preserving transform when using SAP Business Objects Data Services to load data into SAP HANA. So the first thing we need to do is to log into Data Services. So we do that by going to Start. We can access that from All Programs, Data Services, and we choose the Data Services Designer. Log in with your credentials. So for me, it's student, and the password is welcome one. And then it logs you into the system. So the history preserving transform works in association with the table comparison transform. In order for you to find out how the table comparison transform works, I've recorded another video under the title table comparison. So go check that out. So I'm going to open up that existing table comparison job and explain some of the issues with that project. So just to recap, what we have, it's very straightforward, assuming you've watched that video on table comparison. We have a source table in which we have 125 rows. And what we did is we wanted to make sure that this table exactly matches this table. Whether you update or insert any new rows in this table, we want this table to be a complete match. In order to implement that, we use the table comparison transform. Now, the issue with the table comparison transform is that if you've spotted an update, then what will try to happen is you will try to update a, or sorry, insert a new row into this table. You might have problems with that, with that if you have your first column as a primary key, and I'll demonstrate that to you now. So we'll then use the history preserving transform to get around this issue. So just to recap, we have 125 rows in our source table. The table comparison will then detect any differences in any of the columns within those rows and any of those differences will then be moved to the table comparison table here on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to modify this row 127. I'm just going to make a change to eGlobal and call it eGlobal2 as a simple example. What will happen though and what the problem is is that when I run this job with the table comparison transform what's going to happen is that it's going to update the target table in our case called table comparison with the change but there are times when you want to preserve the change you don't want to override what you have in your target system let me demonstrate this so I'm going to go to my SAP HANA studio and what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to change one of these rows to be called eGlobal2 very simple change so if I go to my catalog and I go to my STS database. We need to make the change in the DIM customer table. Again, DIM customer, as you can see here, is the source table. And we're going to change this row, this column, to be called eGlobal2, where the customer ID equals 127. So if I go to my DIM customer table, I'm just going to do a open content first. I'm just going to copy this part of the statement. And then I'm going to create a new SQL editor. And we're going to run the following command. So I'm going to update this table. I'm going to set the customer, set the company name. equal eGlobal2 where the customer ID equals to 127 okay so then I'll click on execute and we can see that change has been made and now if I go to the end of my dim customer table we can see that we've got the existing company name as eGlobal but I'm going to refresh that table 
And now when we go to the end, we can see that it's called eGlobal2. So we've established that we've changed the source table and we want that reflected in the target. Now if I go back to data services and I execute the job, let's see what happens. The job completes. We can see that if we go to the monitor tab, one row has been identified. And if we go to the actual target table and refresh and scroll to the bottom, we can see that now we've included, but unfortunately updated that target row. So the issue is that we have no control at the moment on what happens in the output of the table comparison. If there's a change in the source, what the table comparison will do is replicate that change in the target. But there are times when you, want to, when you would want to preserve history, when you want to identify and keep the change that you've made. And we can do this with the history preserving transform. So I'll go ahead and implement that. So what we need to do is I'm just going to make a bit of space here. And firstly, what we need to do is add that history preserving transform. So I'm going to delete the join between the table comparison and the table comparison transform and the table comparison table. All I then need to do is go to my fifth transform, my fifth tab, and in that list of transforms, we have one called, within the platform folder, we have one called, sorry, within the um, data integrator folder, we have one called history preserving. So I'll select the history preserving transform and I'll place it next to the table comparison transform and I'll just join up the, the objects. So I'll join table comparison to history preserving and for now I'm going to join the history preserving to the table comparison. So what this essentially will do is the following. We can, con we can configure things in the history preserving transform which I'll cover in another video. But what this essentially will do is that if there's any change in the source when connected to a table comparison transform, it will not try and update the target table. Essentially what it's going to do is it's going to create an additional row because it spotted that there was a change. So essentially it's going to preserve the history. There's an issue with it though. So let's actually execute the job and see what happens. Now obviously now there is no change because we've updated the target. So let's go ahead and run that job. What we should see that is that nothing comes out of table comparison. So actually nothing will happen. The job finishes successfully. We never made a change. So what we should see is that nothing comes out of the table comparison. And because nothing comes out of the table comparison, nothing goes into history preserving. So nothing is preserved. So this means that this job would have run very, very quick. It will compare the source and the target and identify that there's no change. Let's go back to our HANA Studio and we're going to make a change and we're going to specify that this is going to be called Global 3 for that same row. Again, to confirm, I'm going to go to the customer table, refresh, and now from eGlobal 2, it's going to be called eGlobal 3. So what should happen if we did not have the history preserving transform is that we will simply override the target table. But again, sometimes you want to preserve the changes that you've made, especially if you're implementing some form of slowly changing dimension, whether it's one or two or three, or specifically two or three, SCD type two or three. So now let's go back to our data services job. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my table comparison job. We've got our data flow. And what we're going to do is the following. Now I'm going to execute this by going to my table comparison job, right clicking, selecting execute and clicking on OK. We're going to see that we've got a small issue. 
the job fails. And can you guess why the job has failed? Well, it's quite straightforward. The issue is that now we're going to have an integrity constraint. Because we've selected the history preserving transform, what essentially is going to happen is that it's going to try, firstly, the table comparison transform identifies that this row has actually changed. But now because we've added the history preserving transform, it's going to try and add this whole row as a new row. Unfortunately, we've already got the row number 127 as the customer ID, and we've specified that customer ID is a primary key. That's why, again, in my job log, we get the issue of the integrity key constraint, as you can see here in the error log. Integrity constraint violation. So the way we can fix this is with another transform called the key generation transform, which again I've looked at in another video. So I'll select the key generation transform, add it to my canvas, and then what I'm going to do here is join history preserving to key generation, join key generation to table comparison, and simply configure the key generation transform. Of course, we're going to use that table comparison table We'll use the ID, which is fine, and we'll increment by one. So now what should happen is that we should have two rows, 127 and 128. And yes, there are ways to deal with this with surrogate keys, which we'll cover in another video. But for now, we'll just keep it very simple. So when I execute the job, what will happen is that we'll have a new row with a new ID, and you'll see that we've got global two, and hopefully you'll see that we've got global three. Again. If we go to the monitor tab, we can see that one row has been passed from the table comparison transform to the history preserving transform. The history preserving transform converts an update statement to an insert statement. And now when we go into the table comparison transform, sorry, the table comparison data flow, and we right click, sorry, and we go to our view data icon on the table comparison table, and scroll to the bottom, what you should see is two rows. Global 2, which of, of course was 127. And now we've converted the insert into uh, the update into an insert, and we've incremented the key by one, and now we've got global three. And again, of course, we can deal with preserving the original key using surrogates. All that's possible and will be explained in another video. Again, we can go back to our HANA database, and I can go and do a table, a data, value, data preview of that table comparison table. And if we scroll to the bottom, we can see that again, we've got global, global two, and now global three, because we've switched on the history preserving transform. So that's a very, very simple way in which you can use the history preserving transform in association with the key generation and table comparisons transforms in order to preserve any changes in your source database. This is very useful when you're doing things like implementing slowly changing dimensions. So I hope you understood that simple demo of using the history preserving transform when using SAP Business Objects Data Services and loading data into SAP HANA.